uh, as promised, we're joined now by the former Tottenham captain, Michael Dawson. Very good afternoon to you. OK, um, let, let's start with Antonio Conte first of all. Um, after um, that press conference at Southampton, was there any way back for him? Was it a matter of, of when he left rather than if? Good morning, Rob. Well, I think after that, that press conference, it was, it was always going to be hard to to, to walk back into the change room. Look, it came where, where there was a point with in, international break coming up, plays were going here, there and everywhere with the representatives of countries. And they had time to reflect on that. And, and the outcome for me was going to be inevitable. I mean, when you come out and uh, make the digs, digs he did uh, regarding the players, I think it's hard. I mean, when you're in a changing room, things are said and it stays behind closed doors. And that happens, you have disagreement disagreements, you, you say what you think, players might react to that. I think when it came public, it was massive um, and it, it was going to be hard to, to then turn around. How, did, how were the players going to react? Uh, and the club and the board made a, made a decision. And for me, they probably weren't wanting to do this. Um, you know, the situation they're in, in the top four with 10 games to go. And that'll be the main, main focus now is, is how do we get the group together with Christian Cellini, Ryan Mason. Ryan Mason obviously knows the club inside out. He knows those players. He's, he's done this job before. Um, and so I, I think that's the reason they went down this route, stick to continuity and, and, and they know the players. And now, as I said, with 10 games to go, got to try and make sure they can get over the line and, and in the Champions League for next year. But it, it, Written between the lines, paraphrasing one part of what he said in that Southampton, what do we call it, um, Rant? I don't know what we call it. But one of the bits he said in there was, if you, if you want this to change, you've got you've to make that, make that change. You can just change manager again and it'll still be the same. You, you, you've got to do it from the inside and get tough, is what he was saying. And what did they do? They, they went and changed the manager. So in some ways, was he, was he right during that rant? Well, he was obviously disappointed. You, you're 3-1 up... Uh away to a team at the bottom of the, the league and you concede two late goals. So you're frustrated, but that has been building up, obviously, for, for a long time with uh, Antonio Conte. So his disappointment came out, it showed. But there's times when you do the, the media that, that things stay in-house. Um, and certainly as a, as a player, I had plenty of managers that ranted and raved, raved that... Uh, us inside the dressing room, but you go outside and you can't make it public because it just gives everyone then a chance to to shoot the players down because that was that was unacceptable what happened as I say th three three one up you, they're in a good position they had a period of, of 10 days where the positivity I remember sitting sitting here Rob and, and doing the this show before they went to Sheffield United they lose to, to them they lose to Wolves and then they're out the Champions League and that 10 days obviously just transformed up everything but now they've got to refocus, come back from international and try and get back on the, on the bike and, and win, win games. And, and you look at the games coming up with, with Brighton, uh, Everton, Brighton and Bournemouth, they're your next three games, Newcastle, Man United and Liverpool. So they're winnable games, but they've got to get back, they've got to get a mentality. And I think that's why, like I said earlier, they've stuck with Christian Stellini and Ryan Mason. You bring a new manager in now, they change the whole philosophy, different ways of, of playing so stick to continuity and, and hopefully they can get over the line yeah those six games you mentioned all coming in april so it's going to be um mm. it's going to be busy isn't it play their four it's closest defining, rivals Rob, that'll define the, the season of course it will um certainly with with brighton hunting them down they've got i think three games in hand on on spurs so and they're a, a team that's in great form new manager coming in and he's he's certainly been incredible so all, all these kind of things People want to be in Spurs positions. Yes, they played more games. And, and Newcastle and Liverpool, I, I believe, they're the teams that, that are hunting them down. Yeah, because um, Tottenham uh, are fourth. They're two points clear of Newcastle. But as you were saying, the Eddie Howe side have two games in hand. Liverpool and Brighton further back also have games in hand. So do you think Spurs can secure Champions League football from this position? If they don't, having sat Conte while they're in the top four... How will the fans reflect on that? Well, it's going to be disappointing, of course, if it doesn't happen. Um, they're, they're in the driving seat at the moment, but other teams have got games in hand. But they're coming up against all these teams, so it will. Those games will decide it for, for sure. Uh, and as I said, the board wouldn't have been. Ex he said after the Southampton game. So this will probably 
um, come early. I mean, look, his contract was up in the summer, so what was going to happen then? We're not too sure. But now it's been made, and we're going to reassess this in the summer for, for sure, Spurs, and, uh, and rightly so. But their focus now is rally round 10 games, give it everything you've got. We've we, we seen it last year, what happened at the end of the season. Arsenal were in in pole position and it came to the final two games when, when, they, when they met Arsenal and they got over the line. So other teams are chasing them down. They want to be in that position. Um, but while you're, you're in fourth year each game, you've got to make sure, sure you win. And as I say, the last game, unfortunately, they're in a position where they were 3-1 up uh, and they threw it away. Yeah, by the fact that they, they put Stellini in until the end of the season, do we read into that that Finishing in the Champions League or not finishing in the Champions League is a huge factor in who they could attract. Well, no, like they, w they wouldn't want to upset the apple cart in bringing. I mean, you look at uh, Julian Nagelsmann's been linked, Maurizio Pochettino. But as I said, you change the manager with 10 games to go. Christian Cellini has is, is, is taken over. They beat Manchester City, they beat Chelsea, did well in, in, in the Champions League with Marseille. So you can see he knows. Um, the players he's managed before he's got Ryan Mason as, as I said so don't change it completely I mean look as I, you see some of what the players have said with Antonio I think it would have been hard for him to, to come back he's, he's had his own issues in his personal life he's had to deal with a lot uh, and that's been disappointing for, for him um, but as I say they've made the decision now they've got 10 games to focus and, and make sure they get over the line Champions League is everything um, as I say for the, for the players for the football club um, and then obviously for the new manager yeah oh, okay I'm thinking about Nagelsmann who I saw today that uh, Real Madrid could be interested in him mm -hmm. uh, so so the narrative of being in the Champions League or not Champions League could be huge there couldn't it definitely and he, he's going to be a, a manager that people are talking about young manager yes the uh, a point behind Dortmund in in, uh, in the Bundesliga but they're still in the Champions League face um, Manchester City so look he's a he's a top manager he's a young manager we look what he, he was at, at Leipzig he, they went and spent a fortune to get him to manage Bayern Munich so his stock is high people will be looking at looking at him and people will be talking about him yeah as, as for Pochettino I mean his his case could be slightly different couldn't he because he, of his links with mm -hmm. Tottenham but what does that say about Daniel Levy and, and his appointment of managers if he goes back to Pochettino, a man he sacked when Tottenham were actually in a position of strength, weren't they? Well, they were. I mean, Pochettino, when he came in, in 2014, um, great manager, honestly. Although did, Maurizio did sell me. Uh, I hold no grudges. I mean, where he took the football club to the next level, Champions League, League final, he was... He, it was so close and that could have been the difference. You, you win that, you get semi-finals of FA Cups, but you just didn't get them over the line, unfortunately. Daniel Levy, one thing he does, he always believes he's doing the best for the football club and sacking him would have been a wrench. he bring Jose Mourinho in and that didn't work. Um, but look, he'll be, he'll be trying, to, trying to look for the best person who he believes can take the, the club forward and try, and try and win something. That's what the football club is, is all about and that's what they're striving, striving to do. And Daniel will be working to do that. How pivotal is Harry Kane in all of this as well? Uh, Antonio Conte with his seventh permanent manager. His contract runs out at the end of next season. If they're getting any money from him, he has to go this summer, but they would be desperate for him to stay and desperate to keep him happy, I should think. For me, you have to keep Harry Kane. Uh, and the club won't be looking to sell him. I mean, you look what, he, what he's done for, for Spurs in England. The guy's a genius. I love him. He's... He's unbelievably, his goal scorer record we see he just brought the New England all time goal scorer, Spurs all time goal scorer, never not Harry Kane. He is an absolute legend of the game, um, scores goals year after year. He's a finisher. So, one thing they can't do is, is, is let Harry Kane go because he's unbelievable. He, he's helped us uh, get to where, where they are. And say a year left on his contract, his focus will be to trying to get in the, in the Champions League. That is everyone's focus connection with, with Tottenham, um, from, from top to bottom to the supporters. Uh, and, and there's a big rally, like I say, for, for ten, 10 more games. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I must admit, from the outside looking in, I'm confused by all of this because if it, Conte and Mourinho, between them, have won more trophies than Pep Guardiola, yet they were serial winners when they came to Tottenham, yet for some reason... 
this lack of trophies for Tottenham continues. So what is it about? Where, why aren't Spurs capable of winning silverware? Well, that's the big question, Rob. Um, and you look back to 2008, it's so long. But I, I always say how hard it is to, to, to win something. You look at the, the teams challenging for, for the Premier League and Arsenal are there at the moment. Manchester City have been there for, for a long, long time. It's fine, fine margins. And I go back to uh, the disappointment of, of the 10 days where, where they lost to Sheffield United. That was an opportunity. And, and they know that. And, and managers, when they make decisions that you don't play Harry Kane and you lose, you become under scrutiny. And as I say, and then you got in the Champions League, all these things, you, you do, you become under pressure and a, and a major disappointment that they haven't won something again this year. And, and that's hard, but along with a lot of other, other teams, it's, it's certainly hard to win something. Is there any scenario where Christian Stellini has a 10-game interview for the job on a permanent basis? If he does well, could he be given it full-time with Ryan Mason alongside him? I'm not too sure about that, Rob, to be honest. I mean, look, this is a, a, an interview for him, maybe not just for Spurs, but for everyone he has managed before. So, uh, as I've said, if he goes and, and does that, I mean, that's something that, that the club maybe will look at. I, I'm not too sure they will. Um, but if he goes and wins 10 out of 10, which is certainly a, a tough ask, but he gets him into the Champions League, uh, then maybe that's something to look at. I mean, you always say when you're in charge, when it's interim, you're in a job interview. Uh, and if it goes well, then... Maybe why would you look elsewhere? But at this moment in time, I'm not too sure we're on. OK, Michael, lovely to speak to you as always. Thank you very much indeed.